Madison Square Garden, the undisputed young champ, Alicia Baumgardner. Over to you guys for, for questions. You know, I think she just showed her resilience as a fighter. I think that the perfect fight for my undisputed match just because she kept for coming forward and she she wanted the fight just as much and that that I had to dig deep for that no no I think she that's just the way she fights you know the division knows I hit hard so you know you better keep a high guard Lisa, you said how much did that affect you? Say that again, I'm sorry. You, you said you were dealing with step up this morning. How much did that actually affect you? You know, I won't know until I fight, and it, it kind of hit me in the little later rounds. And um, But again, you can't beat me on my worst day, and I think that just shows how strong a woman is, and we push through, and we, we get the job done. You and I talked a bit about this moment. No, it hasn't hit me yet. I just know that I had an assignment in front of me to, you know, make sure that I have had a, a dominating win, and, and that's what we did. It'll probably hit me tomorrow, but I'm just thankful that we got the job done. I did everything I was supposed to um, leading up to this fight, and here we are as undisputed. Well, I'd love to take her to Detroit. Um, I think, you know, she deserves a homecoming fight. Troy is supposed to fight Alicia Baumgartner. I don't think she will in a million years. So, you know, we can either look at a defense for Undisputed or at the same time, um, she wants to fight Katie Taylor. You know, we also have Chantel Cameron, Undisputed at 140. Huge nights ahead for Alicia. Well, she was, but she turned down several fights and obviously this fight as well. And, and thank you to the WBA as well for you know, keeping the belts active and, and making sure that we could crown an undisputed champion. Alicia, talk about numbers, how you doing? Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you consider this fight tougher than the last fight? I would say so. Um, I would agree that this was a tougher fight in the sense of, you know, having Mechaled who was wanting the fight. You, you know when a fighter wants it. And she just kept coming and coming. And I, and I love that. And again, like I mentioned, I had to dig deep to get this win. And I and she just, you know, after knocking her down, she got right back up. And um, it was great, though. I wouldn't want anybody else for this for this undisputed fight. So it showed me as a fighter what I need to work on. I'm, I'm always improving, and I want to improve. And um, I can't wait back to get back in the gym. It looks like you had fun. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the number one thing. you got to have fun with this. Yeah, the feeling to be here in New York has been great. You obviously seen that women can sell out a show. We put on great performances to be back here in the States after being in the UK, which I love being in the UK. I love my UK fans. It's just great to just show America and the people who are able to come here, see me perform, and just feel the energy and the love. Um, this is building the sport of women's boxing. Many women are doing their thing, and it's just nice to highlight different stories and um, just mine included, and I'm just thankful. And again, having Tony Harrison in my corner as a, as a fighter, as a former world champion, he knows what it takes to dig deep. And um, I just have a good ear to listen and we get, we get the job done. I would say probably uh, the fourth the fourth round. Fourth round, yep.
Chat, what did you think about the reception you got here in New York tonight? It seemed like the crowd loved you. And when Michaela was showing the screen, she got a lot of booze. You know, what's your thoughts on that? You know, I think the, the states love me. You know, New York loves me. It was awesome to fight here again. It was a great fight week. We had a great media week this week to just build this fight for two undisputed great fighters um, doing what they do and just making history. So, again, I would love to fight here again. It's been a pleasure. Man, a homecoming fight in Detroit would mean everything. Again, I used to, I was a club fighter back in the day selling tickets. I know I can put people in seats. I know I'm entertaining. And I know that I can sell out a great crowd, um, whatever arena that we choose in Detroit. It just would put Detroit back on the map. You know, Detroit has a history of boxing and just great champions coming out of that gym, um, out of that state. And again, oh, as a woman, as someone who's pioneering through through this journey and in, in support of boxing, it means everything to really just um, make a statement in my hometown. Yeah, definitely. The third round, um, you know, we, we knocked her down twice. And, you know, when you smell blood and you're hungry, and you're like, oh, I got to get that. Um, you can go after, go after it a little too fast. But, again, that's why we use the jab to get back to what we needed to do. And the jab is so important. So good strong legs, a good jab will get you back on track. And, you know, we continue to show um, that we're a champion fighter. Did you think you were going to finish her? I did. I did, but it, it, then again, I'm like, okay, she's gonna keep coming forward. We're just gonna, again, do what we do best. Use our jab box and let the openings come when they come. Man, listen, I'm so thankful for Eddie Hearn for just giving me a opportunity. And with the opportunity, I took it by the balls and I said, let's do it. And I just continued to push myself. I believed in myself. You know, he believed in me, the team believed in me. And again, I'm just thankful. And here we are today. If you believe in yourself and you can do it, it shows and dreams do come true, so. Just to say as well, that the way that she did it, she went to the UK as an underdog in Terry Harper's backyard to win the world title. Then she defended it, then she took a unified shot on an, another promoter's show as the away fighter to unify the division and then become undisputed tonight. Great achievement. So it, it really, it comes down to the business. I mean, look, I think it, you know, it's great to see females get opportunity in sport. You know, I have two daughters myself, one of them boxes, one of them plays football and it's amazing to see now the opportunities that are being presented but it has to work right if they weren't entertaining if people if we didn't set out this place tonight you know we couldn't carry on doing what we we're doing so they're producing and they're entertaining and what they're doing is they're motivating us because they're willing to fight champion after champion undisputed after undisputed and like it's a joy as a promoter you can go through every division and you know that every you can make a unification against every single champion in a division and you can make an undisputed champion in 12 months and in in men's boxing it's so frustrating you can't even make a unification right so i believe and every fan believes that you should have one champion in every division in boxing and if you look now you've got Undisputed at 126, undisputed at 130, undisputed at 135, undisputed at 140. McCaskill lost the belt, but really undisputed at 147. Could be at 54. Clarissa at 60. Franchon Cruz is at 68. And you can say, who is the best? And this is now the number one super featherweight in the world. No question about it. And that's what we've never really had in boxing. Too many belts, too much fragmentation, too much politics. And in women's boxing, that, that's not there anymore. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when, you, when a girl walks through the gym, 
It's not just to become a champion. And that's the same as any boy walking through the gym. It's about getting fit, it's about being strong mentally, it's about discipline, manners, respect, all the things that boxing gives you. But I'll say one thing. I've done five shows at, at this uh, venue. One was Danny Jacobs, one was Devin Haney, one was Demetrius Andre, one was Teofimo Lopez against Cambosis, and the other one was this. And apart from Teofimo against Cambosis, this was the best selling event of all of those other names. Right? So, and, and again, that's what gives it longevity. You can tick boxes and say, oh, let's do a female fight because it's good, it's good, it's a good look for us. No, we're not doing it because of that, we're doing it because it's good business. And that's what will give it longevity. And, the, and the, the female fighters now are seeing those purses going up. They're still not where they need to be. But there's no excuse now why they shouldn't be because of the revenue being driven and the, the viewership of, uh, of the events. Probably. Probably. And now all the other promoters will come in and agents and try and steal and rob fighters and do what they do. But I think we're, you know, with the, the era that you're seeing now are safe to, to go on and, you know, and. You know, at least she's changed her life in 12 months, but it's just the beginning. She's only young. She's really, she's just really coming into her prime now. Listen, I reached out to Top Rank and I said, what do you think about the Michaela Meyer remix? This is after the first fight. And I said, make us an offer. And it better be a massive offer with plenty of zeros on it. And it never came. Zeros didn't come. Lots of, lots of zeros, you know? And it never came, so they can't want it that bad because if they, you know, and we would entertain a rematch. It'd be a lot of money, but it's a massive fight in America. Huh? Detroit, perfect. But, you know, wherever, in the Garden, Vegas, but the offer's got to be right. You know, she went and boxed on their show as the away fighter and won. And they paid her well. But now it's got to be a lot more. Mm hmm. How many zeros are we the ones that never end. I'm the same as zeros. Yeah, big fight, big fight. The undisputed super featherweight champion against undisputed lightweight champion. Listen, I love Alicia against Amanda Serrano. That's an unbelievable fight as well. We've got the, well, you know, MVP, but we work with them. We've, you've got the four undisputed champions from 126 to 140, and they can all fight each other. Cameron, Taylor, Serrano, Baumgartner. They can all fight each other. See what happens on May 20th? You know, but Alicia will be looking to fight around the same time as well. But the winner, the loser of that, you know, if Serrano loses that fight, she's still undisputed featherweight world champion. You know, and Alicia likes to eat, but she can make 126, but she'll probably defend her 130, you know. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, she's going to fight at least twice this year. So, you know, three times minimum this year, and, and there'll be big fights. Say it again. You know, you, you have to just respect when you have you have two fighters, you know. We have a, a mentality when, when you're a fighter in the ring. You know, Tony sees one thing from his fighter's eye, from a trainer's eye, and again, it just works. And when it works in the corner, that, that's all that matters. And when it flows, it goes, and here we are. boxing since the age of eight and I've been with you know great trainers I've, I've been able to take a lot from each trainer and just build myself as a fighter I'm a natural born athlete I love learning and growing and it, you, you'll see just an improved fighter every time I step in the ring so again like Eddie said I'm, I'm really stepping into my prime I'll be 29 this year and um, you know you'll just see more and more And he has his fight March 12th. We're going to see. Absolutely. Is it fair to say that this is the golden era of women boxing? Absolutely. Y'all, y'all got to capitalize on this moment. This is a movement, like I've, I've been preaching. 
for just women's sports and boxing has just elevated that in the in the in the sport of boxing so it's great. Alicia, hey, uh, yeah, I would say I gave myself an 8 out of 10 today. Um, you know, I have to go back and watch it. I know the things I have to work on. And again, I'm always trying to improve. So 8 out of 10, definitely need to know what I got. I know what I got to do next time. But um, that's the sport of boxing. It's what I love and I love learning. Oh, she was great. And I thought it was a lot of pressure because she was just expected to win tonight. And that was what I was worried about, you know, in, in camp was like, she just, you know, Brian would say, oh, she's a bit confident, you know, she thinks she's just going to walk through this girl. And, and when you're thinking about other things, sometimes they're the most dangerous fights. Last question, guys, if there's one more. Alicia, you said that you go up to like 40, what do you feel like the true range is in terms of Honestly, I like 130 um, to 140. You know, I'm comfortable. I can make those weights very easy, and I don't have to drain myself. So you have a strong fighter at all three weights. Thanks, everyone. The undisputed two featherweight champion of the world. Thank you so much for watching this video, and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV, and give us a follow online as well at. Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.